the film about a voyage on the Russian icebreaker Captain Kalevnikov to visit the remote Emperor Penguin colony on Snow Hill Island in the Weddell Sea. Our voyage to the Emperor Penguin colony on Snow Hill Island took us from Ushuaia at the tip of South America, down the Beagle Channel, then across the Drake Passage and into the Weddell Sea, to the southern tip of Snow Hill Island where the colony is located on fast ice. Arriving in Ushuaia a day before the scheduled sailing of the icebreaker Captain Kalemnikov, I had time to look around Ushuaia. Ushuaia is the capital of the Tierra del Fuego province, which the Argentines claim includes the Falkland Islands belonging to Britain. From 1896 until 1947, Ushuaia was the home to a prison whose prisoners served as forced settlers who built many of the early buildings in the city. The area's indigenous people, known as the Yagan, were largely wiped out following the arrival of settlers. However, their memory lives on in several murals around town. The hotel was on a mountain with the brown water due to springtime runoff, but it had a wonderful view out over Ushuaia, including its pier where our icebreaker was tied up. During the 1982 Falkland Islands War, the Argentinian cruiser General Belgrano sailed from Ushuaia and was subsequently sunk by a British submarine. Our ship, the Russian icebreaker Captain Kalebnikov, was tied up at Ushuaia's pier and once aboard the ship, there was time to watch longshoremen loading containers on a ship across the pier. After the mandatory lifeboat drill, it was time to cast off the hawser lines back away from the pier and then head down the Beagle Channel under the guidance of a channel pilot. The warm exhaust from the ship's cooling doors provided a comfortable place to stand outside in the cold air. The Beagle Channel was alive with seabirds, including shags, albatrosses and Magellanic penguins. Puerto Williams, Chile is a town of some 2,900 people and serves as a base for Chile to assert its sovereignty around Cape Horn and to support its Antarctic basin. The Magellanic Penguin is a medium-sized South American penguin that was named after the Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan, who spotted the birds in 1520.
After disembarking the channel pilot, we headed out across the troubled waters of the Drake Passage. Like other icebreakers, the Captain Kalebnikov has a rounded keel with no protuberances, hence there are no stabilizing fins as found on most ships. This means it's uncomfortable to travel on seas such as the Drake Passage, since it rolls heavily even in light seas. During our crossing of the Drake, the ship rolled seriously and made both eating and moving about a challenge. I was in a triple cabin high up on bridge deck 8, which made the rolling of the ship even more pronounced. At times the rolling was so great that I slid uncomfortably back and forth across my rough sheets. Passing the South Shetland Islands and nearing the tip of the Antarctic Peninsula, the amount of sea ice increased significantly including huge tabular icebergs. The size and the shape of the icebergs varied widely, but all were relentlessly pounded by waves, which at times broke dramatically against them. A fog bow is a similar phenomenon to a rainbow, however it appears as a bow in fog rather than rain. Exiting the Drake Passage with its heavy swells, the ship stopped its heavy rolling as we passed through the South Shetland Islands and crossed the Branfield Strait and sailed through Antarctic Sound, where the setting sun made scenes of huge icebergs even more dramatic. The Adelie penguin is a medium-sized penguin common along the entire coast of the Antarctic continent. They, along with the emperor penguin, are the most southerly distributed penguins. Finally, the ship encountered drift ice and the fascinating spectacle of an icebreaker powering through sea ice started. Russian icebreaker Captain Klebnikov is a polar class icebreaker that was completed in the Warsilla Helsinki shipyards in 1981 for the then Soviet Union, hence it carries a colorful crest of the USSR in its prow. 
She was built to help keep shipping lanes open in the Arctic waters during winter around Siberia. Icebreakers like the Captain Kalebnikov clear a path through the ice by pushing straight into the ice. The bending strength of ice is so low that it usually breaks without noticeably changing the ship's trim. In the case of very thick ice, the icebreaker can drive its bow with a reinforced ice knife into the ice and start to ride up onto the ice until it breaks under the weight of the ship. As like other icebreakers, the Captain Kalebnikov has other features to assist in breaking ice. Firstly, there is water ballast between the inner and outer hulls which can be rapidly shifted from side to side to rock the ship to aid ice breaking. Secondly, an air bubbler system forces air under pressure from two meters or so below the water line where the ice is met. This high pressure air both reduces friction and helps to break the ice and move it away from the ship. The sound of breaking ice was akin to that of someone beating on an empty 45 gallon drum. It's fascinating to watch the ship breaking thick sea ice into large blocks and pushing them aside as we move forward. Exiting Antarctic Sound, we entered Admiralty Sound that runs between James Ross Island and the islands of Seymour and Snow Hill. At midnight, Captain Vladimir Boldakov began looking for ice of suitable thickness that would allow for our nice activities in the morning. The ship's strong lights were switched on to assist the search. The captain had to try a number of times before he finally found ice that he deemed thick enough for on-ice activities. The Captain Kalebnikov's propulsion is provided by three twinned DC electric motors, each turning a 22 meter long propeller shaft to which is affixed a four-bladed, 4.3-meter four diameter propeller with hardened steel blades. The blades can be changed at sea in the event of damage. The ship's main engines consist of six diesel sets, producing 24,000 horsepower, which results in a cruising speed of 14 knots in open water and a top speed of 19 knots. In the morning, we disembarked from the icebreaker onto the ice for a walkabout.
Walking along the port side of the icebreaker, there were blocks of ice that were broken by the icebreaker and were now frozen in place against the ship's hull. The hull thickness is 45 millimeters at the ice skirt and 25 to 35 millimeters elsewhere. Friction between the ship and the ice is reduced by a polymer painting coating at the level of the ice skirt. Shortly after getting on the ice, a blizzard rolled in, driven by winds that gusted to 60 knots, making for marginal visibility. A rope passed through the ship's bow house hole allowed us to try and pull the ship forward, or at least get an interesting photo. After reboarding, the icebreaker backed out of the ice and sailed onwards. The ship has electric propulsion to the propellers. Electric motors can apply torque when not actually turning or when only turning slowly, such that a propeller hitting a large piece of ice will not stop the engine. Snow Hill Emperor Penguin Colony on the fast ice off of the south of Snow Hill Island was only discovered in the mid-1990s. It is the northernmost Emperor Penguin breeding colony in Antarctica. However, to guarantee a visit, an icebreaker carrying helicopters is required. Off the southern tip of Snow Hill Island, the captain drove the ship into the edge of the fast ice to park it advantageously for helicopter operations to the Snow Hill Island Emperor Penguin Colony, which is located on the fast ice. Snow Hill Island is separated from James Ross Island to the northwest by Admiralty Sound and from Seymour Island to the northeast by Picnic Passage. Snow Hill Island was roughly mapped by James Ross in January 1843. It was named Snow Hill because no rock was visible through the cover of snow and ice. After the captain drove the ship into the ice flow edge, a group of emperor penguins returning from feeding in the ocean passed right beside our ship. They had to march some seven kilometers over the pack ice to reach their colony where the chicks were impatiently awaiting their return.
The icebreaker carries two Mi-2 helicopters, since in order to reach the colony of Emperor Penguins on Snow Hill Island, the use of helicopters is essential. It is not possible to plan a landing on the unstable pack ice from a Zodiac and thus reach the Emperor Penguin colony. The movement of people via helicopter was very efficient given that there were two helicopters operating at the same time with each taking seven passengers. The Russian helicopter pilots were very experienced and the helicopters reliable. The Russian designed Mi-2 turbine powered helicopter was produced in Poland from 1965 until 1998. Some 5,500 examples were made. Both of the Mi-2 helicopters on board were manufactured in 1987 and are based in Vladivostok, as is the icebreaker. It was a 10 minute flight from the ship to the landing site on the fast ice about two and a half kilometers from the colony. The emperors arrive on the fast ice off of Snow Hill Island between March and April. They are very fat at that time and weigh up to 40 kilograms. The penguins pair off and courtship begins, involving trumpeting calls and displays of their golden neck patches. Females lay a single egg between May and June, during the dead of winter and during the harshest of weather. The males incubate the eggs on their feet for over two months. During this time, they do not eat and lose about 45% of their body weight. 
The females, meanwhile, are feeding out at sea and only return around the time when the chicks are hatching. At this point, both parents go out and feed and return regularly to feed the chicks. While they are waiting for a meal, the chicks huddle together in creches for warmth. At about 150 days, they molt into their juvenile plumage and can then go to sea. Blizzard rolled in, bringing winds of up to 40 knots that drove snow hard against both us and the penguins. The driving snow caused most of the penguins in the colony to huddle together. However, some of the adults continued their travels to and from the ocean. the raging blizzard, helicopter operations stopped for an hour, so people awaiting a flight back to the ship crawled into emergency wind shelters until operations resumed.
Ice was avalanching off the glaciers on James Ross Island as the sun was setting. Whilst parked in the pack ice, there was the most amazing sunset that I've ever seen. There were three emperor penguins standing on the ice at sunset, so they provided a very unusual focal point as the sunset progressed. Rough seas buffeted the ship when it was stopped along the ice front due to the high winds. Hence the captain repositioned the ship into the ice pack to reduce sea motion. Once ensconced in the ice pack, the reduction in sea motion was dramatic. Due to the high winds, we lost a day of helicopter operation, so it was a relief when the wind finally died down and the helicopter operations could resume.
Having landed, we again trudged to the colony, accompanied by adult penguins that were returning to the colony after feeding in the ocean. It was fascinating to watch the penguins tobogganing towards the colony when the surface conditions allowed it. With the improved visibility at the colony, the repositioned ship could be seen from the colony in the distance. There was a large swing in the temperature from the freezing temperatures of our last visit in the blizzard to the balmy temperatures that produced a lot of melt water at the colony and made it very easy to sink deep into the soft snow when walking about. On this day, the temperature was above freezing and the result was an amazing amount of melting. Around the colony itself, there was a lot of slush on the ground that puzzled the penguins as they sought to move about. Rather than simply walking, penguins would slide downhill when the conditions allowed. The emperor penguins were not the only birds at the colony. Scavenging brown skuas and kelp gulls patrolled the colony looking for anything edible, be it a penguin egg, weak chicks, or sick adults. Walking around in the slush was unpleasant both for us and the penguins. However, the slush would soon freeze as the overnight temperature fell below freezing.
Arriving back on board, it was time to have some Russian beluga vodka, accompanied with beluga caviar, before settling in to watch the Happy Feet 2 movie, as we started the voyage back to Ushuaia through the ice of the Weddell Sea. Sailing from Snow Hill Island back to Ushuaia, we were afforded our last opportunity to see the icebreaker breaking ice. Watching the thick ice being broken was a highlight of this voyage, and I never tired of seeing the large blocks of broken ice being casually pushed up and then cast aside by the Captain Kalevnikov. Having made several polar voyages on ice-strengthened ships, there is simply no comparison between their limited ice-breaking capability and that of a polar-class icebreaker such as the Captain Kalevnikov. As the goal of working icebreakers is mainly to clear a path for fallen ships, it was interesting to see how long the icebreakers wake remained free of ice. In most cases, the path was only ice-free for a short period of time, which is why the Russian icebreakers are capable of close-coupled towing. During close-coupled towing, the towed ship has pulled up tight and secured into the icebreaker's V-notch. The Adélie penguins are named Adélie after the wife of French explorer Jules de Mont d'Ubreville who discovered these penguins in 1840. Vega was surveyed in 1903 and named after the Swedish ship Vega used by Baron Nordenskiold in making the first voyage through the Northeast Passage in 1878-1879. The Zodiacs were moved from the bow to the stern to prevent damage when crossing the restless Drake Passage. Esperanza is a permanent all-year-round Argentine research station in Hope Bay on the Antarctic Peninsula. It is only one of two civilian settlements in Antarctica. Inhabitants include families and school teachers. Again, we pounded and rolled across the Drake Passage whilst watching waves breaking on the bow and seabirds flying around the ship. Entering the Beagle Channel, the ship's rolling mercifully stopped, and the sun even appeared. Approaching the Beagle Channel pilot station, the crew hoisted the Argentinian flag as a courtesy flag on the mast, and the Russian flag at the stern. At the station, the pilot boat came out from the shore and dropped the pilot off on our ship.
we pass by the ice strength and expedition ship Ocean Nova sailing for the Antarctic Peninsula. Back at Ushuaia, it was fascinating to watch the deckhands using the housers to pull the ship into the pier. We were tied up to the pier on our final night on the ship. With our return to Ushuaia, this excellent icebreaker voyage to see an emperor penguin colony was at an end, and it was time to fly out of Ushuaia for further adventures. Lasting memory from this trip was the incredible toughness displayed by the Emperor Penguins who live in such a harsh environment without any protection from the elements. Take me somewhere nice To some tired island in your heart called Paris